Hello, hello, friends. Welcome to another great day podcast episode. I'm your host and friend, Mayor K. And today I have a dear friend of mine, someone who I met on the set of filming a video for the Friendship Circle out in Michigan. Um, and uh, this, this guy just rolled right in and literally rolled literally. in. Literally. <laughs> literally rolled right in with a beaming energy, fantastic swag, and uh, just really, really live enough the place. And uh, from the get-go, I just, uh, just knew this guy was someone special, and I'm glad to have Ryan on the podcast. Mom, look, Mom, no hands. That's me. Hey, thanks for having me. Brother, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Um, You're looking good, man. That, that beard's getting, getting a little crazy, huh? Yeah, it's been great yeah. For, those who are, yeah, for those who are listening. Uh, I might hear I'm still quarantined, hunkered down at home in Connecticut. And I, just, I just let it grow. I'm tapping into my inner caveman right now. <laughs> That's good. It's part of one of the perks of, you know, what's going on these days is like, you know, I mean, you know, casual dress, you know, um, pants, you know, is optional, but I've let my hair, I've been growing my hair out, my beard out. Yeah. I'm not wearing any pants right now, so it's fine. Okie dokie. <laughs> so we're, we're on that same groove and I feel like, <laughs> and I've got to say, um, I was, I was commenting before the podcast even started how you're right now sitting in the most pimping like zoom room. I don't know if this is, if this is your office, but like, on the set, you have like literally hundreds of, it looks like shoes and a bunch of caps and you're known for your back, you love wearing caps, but you've got an incredible room going on right there. Yeah, this is my home office. Uh, you know, I, I uh, do a lot of inspiring. I, I want to be inspired in my own, air, you know, my own work area. And uh, so I, I made this room as special as I could make it. It's, it's all like piece of, little piece of me everywhere in this whole room. So I love it. What's the, the fascination for sure? How many shoes do you have? That's, that seems like a lot. Uh, I have a man. There's a few hundred, a few hundred pairs of shoes. Whoa! And I have like um, probably close to a thousand hats, if not more. Get yeah. what? When did this obsession yeah. with with hats and shoes? When did that come take place? Uh, so when I was when I was a kid in school, you know, everybody, all the kids got to because I don't have any hands. All the but I look around, I see all the kids wearing rings and bracelets, and I'm like, you know what? Like, I want to be able to like be like represent myself i want to be like wear some bling i want to be able to do something so i was like the thing i can do is i can wear shoes and so i, I ever since i was really young I, my parents hooked me up you know got me sh the sweetest jordans and i still have actually a couple pair of like original jordans from from when i was a kid because no way my feet really haven't grown and i wear a, i wear a preschool size uh shoe so that's a lot cheaper too so that's good but yeah, so I mean, some my, none of my all my shoes look almost brand new because I, I don't touch the bottoms of them. Really, so <laughs> right, so they're just there's they're always in like prime yeah. condition. I love yeah. and it, that just you just like snuck it in there. I don't I don't know if anybody actually noticed it, but you it shows your optimism. Like you're saying, like yeah, you know, my shoes are like I, I get kitty shoes and like, but they're cheaper. So hey, that's cool. You know, like you always yeah. I always find you always find a way to look at things in a positive, optimistic light, and it's it's infectious, man. So I mean, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, um, real quick, real quick, uh, when I send yeah. like an intro intro email to like meet somebody that I haven't met in person. Um, I always tell them that I'm a, I'm a, I'm a father, husband, designer, motivational speaker, mentor. And then I say who just happened to be born without arms and legs, because really like it's, that's not really, doesn't really represent me. It's all, all those other things that represent who I am more, you know, more than, than my disability. A hundred percent. So for those who do not know Ryan and I love, you know, can tell me more about it, but Ryan was diagnosed um, from birth. He's has, and perhaps if I'm wrong, Kong, Gon conjunctal limb deficiency yeah congenital uh, limb deficiency con yeah, you congenital. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah thanks buddy i got one i got two-thirds of it right um yeah. what what exactly is it um and it, how rare is that disease um we do call it a disease i excuse my french uh i don't know i wouldn't say it's a disease, but disease um, right this, it's it, i mean yeah i mean um it's it's pretty rare it's it's really common nowadays so i think it's like one in I think it's like maybe one in 75 kids are like born with a missing finger or a missing hand. Um, but then, and then there's other things where like the umbilical cord will wrap around uh, parts of the arms or legs and then cause like, you know, um, I would say like not, not development, like the arms and legs won't be developed. So, but mine, mine was just a, a, a condition that happened and they called it an act of God. 
and you know it's it is what it is um as much as I my wife's gonna laugh after I said that because I hate that saying it is what it is because obviously it is what it is <laughs> <laughs> right but, um, I mean it's just it's the cards that I was dealt and at a young age I decided you know this is the hand I was dealt and I'm gonna play it so play it full out Wow, wild. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's, but that's a, it's an amazing theme because I've, I've come across um, with, with ch- kids and adults who have, um, who have, you know, missing arms, missing legs, different types of, you know, challenges that were born with that they didn't choose or didn't, didn't have through an accident. But they're, they're on a spectrum of how they handle that, how they approach life. You're someone who comes across as someone who's on like this top tier level where nothing gets you down. Like you have just always at optimal level, facing, facing your challenges, learning skills that most people who have all their limbs do not take on, do not challenge themselves with. Where did this take place? Did you read a certain book? Did you meet somebody? Where did you come up with this and track, get inspired to take on life the way that you do? Um. I wish there was a, I wish there was a simple answer to that it's, but the honest, honest to God truth is just my parents, like at a young age, they are, you know, at my youngest age, I can remember, they were always pushing me to, and telling me that I, I can do anything I want to do. And, and, and I built up that confidence, uh, you know, growing up people mis- uh, mistaken my confidence for cockiness because it was something I had to be, you know, it was, I couldn't yeah. say like, I think I can do that. I, I think I could drive a car. I had to say, no, I can drive a car. I can do it. And yes, it, it, it might have come off as, you know, a little cocky, but that's that whole mentality of me not, not, not thinking I can do something, not, not believing it, I can do something. I had to know I could do something. And um, yeah, it's just, it just it's, a lo- it's a lifetime of training. I like to tell people, it's like people that go to the gym and they work out and they build up muscles and they, and they don't just get that big overnight. They don't just get that, that train, that, 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 uh, you know, it's, it's something that I had to build up. I'm, I'm 40 years old. This is something I had to build wow. up my, yeah. my entire life. So, um, it, you know, when I talk to people and I mentor people and, um, you know, when I go do talks, people are like, how you got to teach me how to do this. I'm like, I'm, absolutely. I'm, that's what I'm doing. But like, it's not going to be <laughs> overnight. You know, it's, it's a, everything that happens in your life. It has to, you have to find the positive in it. Um, good or bad. Um, we don't learn things from, things being handed to us. I fail at things every single day. And, um, and, and it's how I grow and it's how I became who I am. You know, um, if everything was just given to me my entire life and, you know, it made, things were made accessible, I wouldn't have been able to figure out things and, and uh, get, get over them and get through them. And, and so a struggle is what I deal with. I, you know that saying, uh, Mayor's, failure is not an option. Well, yeah. I say failure is a must. And I do it every day and I continue to do it until I get it right. Whoa. That's a, that's a, that's a taking in and switching on the head. Most of us are afraid of failure. Most of us are afraid to even start because of the failure of the, those emotions. I know multiple times in my life that I've stopped doing something like that, but that's, but I like that. It's, it's, it's not, you know, win or lose or win or, or win or, you know, succeed or fail, 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 or fail. What I've heard is as well as um, like Michael Jordan, we used to say, it's, you know, him taking that shot. It wasn't about, you know, whether it's, you know, winning or losing. It was winning or learning. You know, you always, it's always a learning experience on mm-hmm. wh- whatever may, may come to you. So, I mean, you definitely embody that. And, but again, it's like, there's this idea of, okay, you know, like, looking, like looking at things in a positive light. But with you, I feel like there's, there's you, can, you can sort of coast through life that way with you. You know, you're a guy with no arms, no no legs, and here you are, ATVing, flying planes, uh, you know, swimming. Like, holy moly! I mean, like, how does surfing. that even how, <laughs> surfing? How do you even function? Like, in the pool? I don't even know. I, technically, how, actually, I'm curious to know how you even like do that. But you you push the limits. Is that? Do you feel like you have to? You have to put down ex, double the amount of work to get to where people go just casually, like. Or is it just a mindset where you're like, you know what? I'm always consistently tra- pushing myself because if I'm not, I'm going to recede back into a place of, of, you know, who knows, of darkness. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen the video of me training, but, you, you know, you mentioned do I have to do a double. I, I would say they say every for every missing limb, it's two times the amount of energy um, that somebody else would take to do something. So, like, for me to get up and down the stairs, I do that 
two, I do that two times a day, like go up and down the stairs before I work out every single day. So technically that's what, that's 200 times more percent of wow. energy that I'm using to do things. And yeah, I mean, like people ask me all the time, they're like, you've done so much. What have you done? Or what is on your list that you haven't done yet? And honestly, I tell them like, I have a long list, but there's nothing on my list that I haven't done. Um, if it's something that I've wanted to do, I've already done it or I'm going to figure it out. And if I haven't figured it out, I truly, I truly really, I must, I must not want it because everything else I've, I've figured out. So, you know, I mean, yeah, I, I push myself and I'm curious to know what, 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 what are two things on that list? What are two things on the list? Uh, I want a Tesla. I want to figure it out how I can get uh, my wheelchair inside of a Tesla and drive. I, I drive a car now, but it's like, it's a, it's a soccer mom minivan. And I'm, I'm, I'm you know, <laughs> as, my, as grateful bro, as I am, it, like, exactly. I want you something got, you cool. You got the man. brands bling and the backwards cat, bro. That does not fly in the, in the Odyssey. You know what I'm saying? We <laughs> yeah. need that Tesla. Yeah. Elon Musk is a big fan of the podcast. So Elon, you know, hook a brother up. Hook a brother up. Yeah. 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 Hit me up, Elon. And uh, second on the list is, uh, so right now I do a lot of mentoring of families that have kids, kids born like me. Um, and I actually want to start doing this more globally, like reaching out to kids that have disabilities in other countries. And uh, that's, that's number, number, number two on the, bar, on the list that I'm going to be doing soon. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe it's a TV show. Um, I don't know what it is, but uh, we're going to I know you out. did some acting, though. You acted with, Ad, with what's the name, with, um, from Breaking Bad. Didn't you have oh, like, yeah, I was, I was, I was in a, I was on a TV, I was on a movie. Unfortunately, it never got it. Never came out, but I was opposite Aaron Paul and uh, Lena Olin from uh, Alias. Yeah. yeah oh so snap! That was, How was that? Yeah, was that, that recent? Cool. Was that recently? No, it was like four, five years ago. Five years wow. ago. Yeah. Unfortunately, the movie never made it out. I don't know if it was. I don't know what it was, but it's it was, it was, Yeah, it doesn't matter. I was there, and I, you know, it was so. Cool. You experienced it. Was it cool? Was it was a cool experience. Yeah, it was super cool. Yeah, it's uh, you know, I, I'm a huge fan of movies and TV. And to see like how many times they had to take like different angles, they had to reshoot my part and reshoot my line over and over again. Not because I messed up, just because they they want one behind my head, one behind the other actor's head, one over here. It's so right, cool. two shot, wide shot, over the yeah. shoulder, close yeah. up. Right. So I mean, to go back to what you were saying, how you mentor um, kids, families who have the similar, um, how you, similar see, disabilities. Uh, yeah. Disabilities. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, of, with you, um, with what you have, what's usually the, the first, what's a big hump that has to be taught? What's like the first thing that, you know, the child has to learn or is, is it something physically they have to learn or is it a mental like, you know, challenge or mental wall they have to get over that you work with them on? Um, I, I, honestly, it's, it's more, I guess it depends on the kids. Some kids like pick things up differently. Some like some of the kids that I work with, like, I roll, I don't use my wheelchair in my house. I scoot on the floor or I roll on the ground and like causing like me rolling on the ground. Um, it's much easier, much faster, but some of the, some of these kids, like they, they, they've been scooting on their butt the whole time. But what I've found about scooting on my butt is it messes up my hips. It hurts my back after a long time. So it's like, it's like the things that I've got gotten to learn over these 40 years that I can teach these kids right away because there was no, Mayor, there's no book written on like how to live life without arms and legs. Like I wrote mm. this book, I wrote this chapter every day of my life and I'm still figuring things out, you know? So, right. um, and then, and then there's products. Like I use a bidet, like I go to work, I work downtown Detroit for uh, Quicken Loans, Rocket Mortgage. Um, and I use a bidet toilet seat at work. And that's, that's the only accessible thing I have there besides my van. Um, and people are like, people, the, the bidet toilet seats weren't designed for people with disabilities. They were just designed for everybody, right? So like mm. when I tell people, occupational therapists and physical therapists that I'm using one, they're like, what? How come we didn't think of this? You know, I'm like, so, so like still <laughs> to this day, like there's these, there's just things that I've, I call them life hacks, you know, like Ryan hacks, you know, just like yeah. it out. And I get to share these things with uh, the families and the kids that are born like me. That's amazing. Yeah. You're just, you're, you're experiencing and sharing your knowledge as, as you come along, you're learning new ways. And that's something that I found amazing. I, I saw a video where you, you were being interviewed and you, you explained how you learn, you learned sort of similar, I guess, from like my, my left foot with, um, um, what's his Daniel what's his Day Lewis. Was it? Daniel yeah. Day Lewis. Yeah. Like he's like, you know, he's painting, he's drawing with his foot. You started off that way and you're like, wait a second, 
I don't want to, I don't want to continue living life by drawing with my foot or writing with my foot. I want to learn how to do it with my hand. And you challenge yourself and you did that. I love, I love the example you used for by going to a bank. Yeah. I, was, I said like, I'm not, I'm not going to be 30 years old and I have to go to the bank and then like hop up on the counter, like my full body just to write, you know? So I figure out how to draw with a pencil between my, here, I'll show you. Oh, right. And the pencil right here. That's ins- Wow. Yep. Yeah. So, you're, so right now, Ryan, you're, hold, you're holding the pen between your shoulder and your, and like your cheek. My chin and my shoulder. Yep. Yep. My cheek. Yeah. Yep. And I'll draw and write like that. And yeah. That's, and so wow. that's say you know, that, that, um, that was, um, that was like, that was like groundbreaking. That was like crazy when I was like, wow, like I could do how this. How old were you when you, how old were you when you, yeah. when you figured that out? I think I was eight. I think wow. I was eight years old. And I was actually, I was just talking to uh, one of the parents that have a, they have a kid born like me. And she's like, my son, he's drawn with his feet. And, you know, we're going to try to, you know, put the pen maybe in his mouth, but we're like worried that, you know, we want him to be able to type and use Siri. And I was like, no, like really you have to try getting him to do this because too much Siri, too much Google voice. Then the, he's going to struggle with uh, like spelling and reading, you know, cause it does it all for him. So like, no, like, hey, force him. You know, it's, he's he's a kid, so he's gonna be like, ah, oh, it hurts, so it bothers me, whatever. Like, we're all lazy, like we're all lazy as kids. Right. But like, you know, push him, and he, I know he can do it. So, you know, I said, hey, let's FaceTime. I'll jump on there. I'll show him how, like, me drawing drawing something with it, and hopefully that'll help. So we're gonna be doing that soon. But you know, it's just like I said, it's just like little 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 hacks that I've learned over the years to to help. And man, I want to be able to share that with everyone. That's well, I mean, that's, that's amazing. And it seems like it's so crazy because like you picked the one job where you have to use your ha- drawing skills. I mean, you're a graphic designer, <laughs> you're the developer, yeah. like you're, then you are using, you know, you chose the one thing where you need your hands or some sort of mobility to type, to use a mouse. And, yeah. uh, but you embrace it. You, 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 you learned that skill. And now, I mean, here you are, you have a job, you go to, you have a family, you're doing the many different things that they told you as a kid that you were never able to do. Oh yeah. They said literally day one, they, they said, there's, I tell my parents, he's not going to be able to have a wheelchair or go to regular school, have a family, have a job. They just said, they just, day one, they told my parents like, forget about it. Like I was going to be a bump on a log, uh, you know, that's it. That's what they told them. They even gave your mom an option not to have you. Or yeah, to give you away. And, um, yeah, I can tell you that story if you'd like. Um, the day I was born, um, they took me away from my parents, and um, the doctor said, "Hey, before we bring you your son, we want you to know that there's something wrong." And my mom says, "I don't care. Like, bring me my son. I want to see my son." Right. And uh, they're like, "Well, you know, before before we do, and before we let you take him home, we want you to know that he was born without arms and legs." And she says, "I don't care. What do you mean?" before you're going to let me take him home. He's my son. I want my son. Bring me my son. And so they, they, they brought me to them. And, um, and wow. my, my dad's, my dad said he knew right away that I was a fighter. And, and the, the day two of me being, uh, after day two, after I was born, they took me, my parents, me and my parents in a room with all the occupational therapists and physical therapists and all these doctors. And they, they went over the list of things, like I said, the things I wouldn't do. And, uh, wow. and, and my dad pretty much told him, Hey, my, my son's two years old and you're already predicting his future. Two days old. He said two days old. And, uh, and he said, I have a prediction for you. He's going to do each and every one of those things and more. And, and that's pretty much, you know, from that day forward, like they pushed me, they told me about it and, um, they helped me get through everything, man. I mean, I, I wouldn't be who I am today without my parents. That's, that's for damn sure. That's tremendous. What a what an approach where the doctors were coming and focusing on all the things that you cannot do. Your folks were like, let's focus on what we can do. And and you sort of opened yeah. up the podcast with that kind of mentality. What can I do? What you know, we can focus on what's the worst that could happen, what the best that could happen. You know, what what could you do? That that is insane. What what how old were you when you realized that you were different from the other kids? Um, I think I've always known. Um it wasn't like, you know, those, some of those stories where you're like, oh, I was 10 and I realized that um, and I only had one leg or something like that. I was like, I always like wondering, I'm like, hey, I try to think back. Like, was there, 
I think, I think all, all the time, I think my parents let, let me, you know, real, let me know that there was differences, but let me know that those differences were okay. And those differences mm-hmm. didn't matter. And I, and I think um, I'm, th- I'm so thankful that they didn't try to like treat me like, Hey, you're just like all the other kids. Like, no, they're, they saw my difference and um, th- they helped me know that I can do anything. And um, so I think so from a really young age, um, that that's, that's where it started. When I, I remember this, I remember one time I was hanging out with this, uh, this boy and I was super young. I think I was, and you got to remember, I told you earlier that they said my disability was an act of God. So I had this strange relationship with God when I was a kid. And I remember hanging out with this, uh, one of my parents' friends. What was that relationship look like? What was that? What, uh, what was that? What was strange about it? Well, it was strange because imagine somebody telling you that God did this to you your entire life. Yeah. And you not, you know, and I think I was eight years old when I was, I was hanging out with this boy. It was one of my parents' friends' kids. And we hung out and he was, old, he was much older than me. And my parents told me a couple of days after us hanging out, they said, hey, I think his name was Zach. They said, hey, um, Zach's parents called us and they said that before he met you, he, was wanted, to, he wanted to commit suicide. And, you know, he, you showed him that, you know, that not, anything's possible. And I think that day is when I realized that God didn't punish me. God made me different. And God put me here for a reason. And that was that reason was to teach people and to help people and to inspire them and make them laugh. And so ever since that day, I've called my disability a superpower because I have the I have the I have a power to enter a room and make, make people smile, make people laugh and change their life. And, uh, you know, so my relationship wow. with God is much, much different now. Wow, that is unbelievable to to be able to have that effect and to, and to realize that that truly is a gift and that it is a superpower to be able, I mean, you're to literally save lives. How many times have you walked into a room? Have you, you know, talked and I mean, you, you know, the stories that people reach out to you and, and, and say, Hey, thank you. And you, you've had this kind of effect on me, but imagine the people who don't reach out as well. So that's, yeah, I've had a, I've had a lot of messages, emails over the years, phone calls, People tell me like, "Hey, you met you met a friend of mine. He was kill- going to kill himself, and he met you." And it's, I'm like, wow, "Wow, like this is why I'm here." And I, you know, I thank God for, I, you know, honestly, I, I thank God for the gifts He hasn't given me. As much as I give thank Him for the gifts He has given me, because it's the things He hasn't given me that made me who I am. So wow, when it comes, to, I mean, you, you've mentioned God a couple times now. And you've had your troubles, uh, you know, or you had your <laughs> challenges in believing, you know, or, or your faith in God, perhaps. Is that, is, is, I don't know if it was in your mouth. Is that, is that true? Or was there any time when you didn't believe you lost your faith? I wouldn't say, I, I think I've always believed in God. It was just like, I was kind of mad at them. It's like, you know, like, right. <laughs> it's like God, I'm, it's, it's funny because I tell people all the time, they're like, hey, do you go to church? And, you know, do you, I pray every night. Like, I believe like God is in my heart. And um, I have a special relationship with God. Like me and God have this deal worked out where like, I'm going to go out. He made me this way for a reason. And I'm going to go out and use his gifts to inspire people. You know, I'm, <laughs> and uh, that's what I do. And, and I thank God every night for, like I said, for the gifts he hasn't given me just as much as the gifts he has given me. Wow. And, and gifts that you have, I mean, that you have, or I mean, quite a few, I mean, you have, it's, it's quite incredible, you know, growing up, the doctor said you wouldn't have, you know, the job, you got the job. But what's really inc- amazing is that you, you have a family, you know, you, you dated, you found your wife, you got married, you got kids, you really built a home. And, um, and it's another, I, I mean, for, I, I was curious to know, like, you're a young guy, you're, you're on the dating scene. What was that like dating, you know, in your, in your teens or your twenties? What, you know, how, how, yeah, this, I'm, tell me, tell me a steady story, man. I'm, I'm just want to know. It's oh. a, I'm single, man. Teach me, teach me your ways, bro. It's it's uh, it's so funny. I never never had a problem uh, meeting girls when I was younger. It's like uh, I remember, like I would I would talk to a whole bunch of girls, and my buddy's like, you know, he's like, it's easier for you. These girls, they feel sorry for you, and I was like, oh really? Ooh, bro. I was like, really? That's rough. Yeah. I was like, really? So we went out one day. They're going to love this story. We went out to this bar in Canada because Canada, you only have to be 19 to, to go to the bars over there. Yeah. And Canada's right across the border from Detroit. So we went over there 
And I was like, so, hey, you think because I'm in this wheelchair, I, that's why I have no problem meeting girls. And I said, I'm going to sit up at this bar here. And I'm going to let you take my wheelchair. And you go, you can use it the rest of the night. You go meet as many people as you want. And since, you know, girls feel sorry for people in wheelchairs. I said, uh, I said, go ahead and l- let's see how this works out. So I don't know. It was like two or three hours go by and he comes up to me. And he's like, man, I'm really sorry. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, he's like, I was wrong. He's like, it's not your wow. wheelchair. It's obviously your personality. And I said, yeah, and, you know, I've been friends with you for a while. And it's pretty sad that you didn't realize that. And I said, so now that it's the end of the night, can you put me back in my wheelchair? And also before you do that, can you reach in my pocket and grab the four or five phone numbers, girls, girls, phone numbers that I got. <laughs> well, I was at the bar. <laughs> hey, this guy. Wow. Closing shop, sweeping up. <laughs> that, that so, is like I said, that goes back to the whole confidence thing, man. You, you have to be confident in everything you do. And, and that's, you know, that to me, confidence is the, is the key to success. Mm. Did you have did you have a uh, a pickup line or go to, or was it just your your just your smile your confidence just oh uh, just just a, just a smile and confidence yeah that's all I needed I like it I like it and and tell me what happened you met Carrie your your wife now like you how did you how did you guys meet and um and what how did that yeah how did that go about so we actually met at a we actually met at a friend's bar and um I was just hanging I wasn't even supposed to be there that night so it was kind of ironic and. She was walking, walking around and I like, we just locked eyes and she came over. We talked for probably the rest of the night. And I remember leaving there that night and I said, Hey, I just met my future wife. My buddy's like, come on. I was like, no, man, I'm telling you, I, I just met my future wow. wife. Holy and, um, How'd you know? And I don't know. It's just, I don't know. It was just uh, love at first sight, I guess, you know, I mean, oh, it's just, right. I just felt something. And so I waited the whole three days to call her because back then I had a rule. You wait three oh, days. Oh, yeah, dude. The oh. rules, the game. There was, there was a playbook. Yeah. There's a playbook. <laughs> yeah, there's a playbook. So I followed the playbook. And then she's like, hey. And I call her up. She's like, hey, how come you didn't call me? I was like, hey, I'm just following the rules. You know, there's rules. Right. She, was, she was mad about that. And she's like, she's like, want to hear something weird? I was like, yeah. She's like, my mom knows you. And I was like, okay, that's really weird. Yeah. She said, huh. she said, wouldn't. When I was younger, I used to draw these greeting cards because I knew I was going to have to come up with a bunch of money to uh, uh, drive. So I started at a really young age, 12, 13 years old. So I was drawing these greeting cards and selling them at craft shows. Well, her mom was one of my customers at the time that bought one of my cards. Whoa. So okay, so many came... levels, right? You're hustling <laughs> at 13, creating gift cards, you're saving for a car. Bro, that is, you're insane. That's yeah. incredible. You're an entre- yeah. entrepreneur mindset. Yeah. And uh, so she's like, yeah, well, I came home and I, was, I said, I met, I met this guy named Ryan. He's in a wheelchair. He has no arms and legs. And she's like, well, she didn't even say his name. She's like, is his name Ryan? And she's like, what? She's like, yeah, his name's Ryan. She said, Carrie, I bought one of his greeting cards when he was younger. And she's like, and when you were in the Navy, because Carrie was in the Navy, she said, I sent one of his cards to you. So she ran up in the attic. She ran up in the attic and she actually got the card that that her mom center of mine like it's that's crazy that's a trip that's crazy talk about talk about a higher power destiny lives entwining that is really special very very special wow that's incredible so how how is it you know being in a relationship how is it being a father i mean i guess you know do you do you find it challenging as the kids are growing up how to um were there any times where you, you felt less than or you felt like you weren't doing a good enough job or they deserve better. Was any of these types of thoughts or creep See, I, I never, I never let my, I never let any thoughts like that go come into my head at all because it's like, it's just putting me too much to me. It's wasted energy. It's like things that I cannot change. I kind of, I always say, if you can't fix it, forget it. And you always have to make the best of the situation. So like people are saying, Oh, Hey, you, you, you're lucky. You didn't have to change diapers, but, I changed diapers. Like I didn't change them as much as my wife did, but there was times where she had to take a nap or she had to leave for him with me for a little bit. And I fed him and I changed his diaper. And, um, wow. you know, I, I felt, I felt some guilt a little bit when he got a little bit older and he wanted to play catch. But so like we figured things out, we played, we bought him one of those things where you throw the ball at the net and it bounces back and you catch it. Like we just figured things out and we figured things out together. And, um, out of all the amazing things I've done in my life, 
the things I'm most proud of are my two kids. I mean, there's, there's nothing that'll beat that. I have two mm-hmm. amazing kids. My kids are, my kids are amazing. They are. I mean, they, they, wow. I mean, that's, that's, that's amazing. That's special, man. I mean, talking about baseball, you're also like, uh, you, you're coaching some baseball as well. Yeah. Uh, so I retired from coaching baseball two years ago, maybe a year and a half ago. Um, I just, just have it, to, I just have to like dribble in the, the many different things that you do because I want the listeners to know the, like how many, how, the range of things that you do and excel at just so they should know that there is no excuse. <laughs> there is no excuses in life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, definitely no excuses. I mean, if you had an excuse, that's, that's, it's, it's, you'll get over it. You have to figure it out, man. If you truly want something in life, I have this saying, Mary, you might've seen it. It's uh, the only thing in life that's going to stop you or slow you down is yourself. And my saying is don't be your own speed bump because truly, man, like excuses and your own fears is the only thing that's going to stop you. No, nothing else can stop you. Um, so yeah, I coach baseball. We, I coach travel baseball. When I, when I was 12 years old, I started coaching my brother's baseball with my father and we coached mm-hmm. for four, three or four years. And then when my son got old enough, I started coaching his travel baseball team. We, uh, we won some championships and uh, man, it was a lot of fun. And then last wow. year, although I retired from coaching base, uh, travel baseball two years ago, last year I got uh, I coached half the season with uh, my son's new team. So it was, it was a lot of fun. Wow, that's that's really amazing. What scares you, Ryan? Is there anything that scares you, or you're frightened of, or a fear that perhaps you want to face, but something that uh, gets Honestly, you, I can't, stops you in your tracks? Man, nothing. <laughs> I always tell people I'm, I'm fearless. Like, and then that's and that's another thing. Like, that's just that's just the way. I, like, fear fear is something that stops you, you know. And and I don't let anything stop me. So. Like I said, if there's something I want to do and I haven't done it yet, then I'm going to get there and do it. Otherwise, I really didn't want to do it enough. And uh, I, I definitely don't let fear stop me from doing anything. Wow, that's that's amazing. So, if, I mean, what, do you have like one or two tips for someone who could like perhaps someone who's being their own speed bump, someone who's slowing down, they're self-sabotaging themselves, perhaps out of fear, perhaps fear of success. Um, maybe they're in self-pity. You know, maybe they they have a disability or they have some, you know, a mental illness that's, you know, that's slowing them down in a certain way. What, what can you share, you know, that, that perhaps would be able to shift their mindset and to look at things a bit differently? Uh, my grandma told me this one a long time ago. She said that it always could be worse. No matter what happens to you in life, it always could be worse. And you need to be grateful for every moment, every second of your life, because if you're not grateful for the positive things, and if you're not grateful for the negative things that, that, that are actually lessons, like you said, Michael Jordan said, um, everything is a lesson. If you, if you start to look at things, everything as a lesson, you know, being, being born with a disability, I could spend every single moment of my life feeling sorry for myself. And I deal with pain all day long there. I have both my hips. Well, one of my right, my right hip is dislocated and I have constant pain there. And both of my shoulders are dislocated. And, oh, and if I focus, and if I focus, focus on the pain. That's, that's where my mind goes towards the pain. And if I focus on all the positive things that are happening in my life and the things that I'm making it, you know, and, and some people are like, well, some people don't have anything positive going on in their life. And I always tell them, if, you, if you're struggling to find something to be grateful for, start with the air you're breathing, you know, because unfortunately, you know, especially in these times, there's a lot of people that don't, are not breathing so well. And um, 100%. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah, I mean that's, that's attitude of attitude of gratitude. Yeah, that's right. Gratitude, right? Like everything's everything's gratitude. Be grateful for everything. Wow, brother, that's 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 quite amazing. So, just fill me in on on what's cooking. Do you have anything lined up? Something that you're excited about, project wise, or you know anything that you know that you have in the pipeline that's that may be coming up soon? So I'm uh, working on a children's book. Nice. Um, what, yeah. What's the book about? The book is about a little boy that was born without arms and legs, and he discovers that he's different. And I can't give you too much of it because I'll give you the give away the title. Oh, hey. but that, all right, all right, all right. That's all right. gonna be <laughs> that's gonna be coming soon. And um, obviously, I'm gonna be once once everything starts opening up again, I'm gonna start doing a little bit more traveling locally and doing more mentoring. And uh, 
I actually want to get into uh, comedy, stand up comedy. So, yeah. I love it. Another thing yeah, to tackle. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you, you've already shared a, quite a few quite a few stories on here, and I'm sure you've got a lot more to share. And your perspective on life is going to be. Let me know when and where I'll be there. All right, sounds good. And we got to get Elon Musk. You said he's a big fan of the podcast. So. Big fan, big fan. Oh, he's big fan. <laughs> top top five. He's top five. <laughs> um, yeah, for sure. Um, so, Brian, how can people find you? Um, where can they? How can they book you for for a speak uh, as a speaking um, for a speaking gig? All that jazz. You can go on my website, lookmomnohands.com, or uh, my Instagram is also lookmomnohands. YouTube is lookmomnohands. And, uh, but if you, if you go to my website, lookmomnohands.com, you can get to all my social media, and uh, you, can, you can book me right on the website. Amazing, 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 Ryan. You're a rock star. Thank you so, so much for hanging out with me today yeah. and sharing your story Thanks for and having inspiration, me, man. man. Absolutely. Hope to see you bro. in person again soon. I know. It'll I look fun. forward to Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. Like once things start opening up, man, either I'm coming to you or you're coming to New York. Yeah, for sure. You got, I'll throw you back in that uh, ball pit over at the. <laughs> oh, epic, epic, epic. You, that's, you got to put that, you got to put that clip in. You got to put that clip in right here where I kicked I, you in the. All right, dude. Thank you so much. Keep shining your light. Keep rocking and rolling. And uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks, man. See you.